just place your bets on me Scratch the surface and roll up the tree Start the celebrating Cause you, you hit the lottery What's up my beautiful motherfucking people and welcome back Shit, welcome me back It's been forever since I've last surfaced on this channel, right? For those of you that don't know, I've made my return back to reality TV. The Come Up New York season two is where I got my start from the Come Up New York season four is now out. The first episode just premiered last night and I've made the decision that I'm gonna come here every single Thursday and give you guys my uncandid opinion of how the episode plays out. First episode, friends become strangers, wow. Let's take a sip of this wine before we get started. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate y'all for waiting patiently for my return. Make sure you hit that like, make sure you leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe so you know whenever I post a new video because you have on that notification bell, right? All right. Today's drink, we're drinking a little Pinot Grigio, a splash of Casamigos, you know, you know. So let's unpack, right? Wow. We meet some new people, we see some familiar faces, and things get a little chaotic. The episode starts out and we meet Tai Sheen's new boyfriend, Terrence. They're so cute, right? So, so, so cute. But Tai Sheen is not here for the shacking up shit. Like, I feel him. Like, if we gonna keep doing this, if this is where we are and if the future is where we going, before we go any further, before anything becomes us moving to another state together, I don't wanna be shacking up. I, I don't blame him, I feel you. He has his standards, he has his uh, requirements, and he's looking for his partner to meet them. I mean, who doesn't expect that out of their partner, right? So then we move along. This is not in any particular order of how the show played out. This is just how my memory came while I was jotting down my notes. Yeah, I'm taking this real serious. So we meet Joel for the first time. He seems very, very cool. He seems like he's a go-getter based off of the work that was mentioned that he's done and what he's into. He just seems like, you know, he's he, he's in tunnel vision and he, he sees the bigger picture for himself and I love that. Next, we meet Tyrone from Philly. Such a good energy on camera. He seems like he's funny. We haven't really gotten too much into his personality just yet, just off a of first glance. He's cool, he's not looking for drama, he's not looking for mess, he's just coming to meet new people and elevate himself. Another thing that I can attest to that I can admire and, and say, you know, kudos to you. You know what I mean? I love to see another black male another black gay male doing what they do in their craft and their lane and sticking to it and thriving in it. Kudos to you, Tyrone. Now, we meet another new member of the group and we meet Nakai. Nakai seems like, you know, she's cool. I don't know his or her pronoun, so honestly, I'm just going to say she based off of what's being presented. She seems cool. Again, another go-getter, somebody that's in their own lane, doing what they do. She's a real estate agent. She's doing her thing, right? Then we see that O'Neill is back. He has new business ventures. He announces that he's been in a relationship for five years and he's now living with his boyfriend. Now, this is not to be problematic or cause any ruffle any feathers or anything, but if my calculation served me correctly. We filmed season two in 2018, and five years back would be 2017. Now, if y'all remember, if y'all watched season two, O'Neill and Chance went on a date. So, I don't know what the timelines are, but just stay tuned, okay? I, that's all that I'm saying. Based on the knowledge I know, I'm just, you know, thinking of the timeline. Love that O'Neill's in a relationship though. I, I love to see black gay men being loved on and loving on another man. You know what I mean? Like healthy, positive people in a relationship. I love to see it, love to be around it. Top tier. Spanky is back. And um, we don't get too much of a deeper look onto Spanky as far as like what he has going on. 
but based off of what's shown in this first episode, it doesn't seem like much has changed with Spanky, right? Seems like he still doesn't have like a come up per se. He mentions that he's no longer doing YouTube. He's no longer doing his hat collection because of COVID. You're in a group amongst entrepreneurs. I, I don't know what his bigger picture is or what his goal is, but I would prefer for the group to all be on one accord as far as like entrepreneurship and like finding their way within their own um, skill. I don't know what Spanky's skill set is just yet outside of his nine to five that he mentioned. Andre is back. And from what it seems, Andre's not here for Spanky whatsoever. Like whatsoever. And not for nothing, another thing about Spanky is his character is being questioned yet again. That was kind of a situation for him back in season two that I can remember. His character was being questioned from me, from other cast members, like, so now he's in a boat to where he's still being questioned. You know what I mean? And it's not from everybody, but it's obviously strongly from Andre. And I will touch base on the scene with O'Neal and Joel. It seemed like that conversation or just that scene itself was a little forced. Like they weren't really, like they weren't used to or comfortable with being around each other like that. Like it seemed like two people meeting for the first time. It could have just been me, but I am big on reading body language, eyes, like all of that, like vibes, aura, like it just was screaming like, uh, I'm here, but I'm only doing it because production kind of like wanted this scene to happen, you know? But I don't know, I could be tripping. I was smoking and sipping a little bit while I was watching the episode, so we'll see how that plays out, but those are the vibes that I'm getting. What y'all think? Now that we've met everyone, we got to see who everyone is so far that's being showcased. We have this meet and greet on the rooftop and the rooftop seemed very light, easy. Everybody was happy, having good conversation, meeting one another for the first time. And then boom, the shit starts, right? And I hate that it had to, happened this way because I've had my share when I was on season two of like being the bone collector, right? And when I say that, I mean, I have a private conversation with somebody or a conversation with a group of people and we're talking about a particular person or a particular few people that aren't there at the moment, right? And they're candidly expressing how they feel or their perspective on this one person or multiple people. And then when those multiple people come around or that one person comes around, I would then say, oh, so-and-so said this. There's no need for that to happen. A, if that person that said it is not there, and B, if it don't got nothing to do with you. Cause now you're inserting yourself into mess for no reason. Especially when you go and say, this has nothing to do with me, so my opinion honestly doesn't matter. I think that was her words verbatim. So if your opinion doesn't matter, why are you even bringing it up to the group? Spanky or Andre had not even shown up yet. You're just telling people what you heard from Andre, right? How do you know Andre wanted to like broadcast that? Andre obviously confided in Nakai to let Nakai know how, what, what it was. Why? Why? Did you have to now go and say that? One, now you know people that either fuck with Andre or fuck with Spanky are now going to now be like, oh, Andre, Nakai said this. Or, oh, Spanky, Nakai said Andre said this. It's a whole bunch of shit for no reason now. So that starts. Andre and Spanky are finally in the scene now. Andre's introducing himself and I guess Ty peep Spanky's vibe once Andre pulled up. And when I say Ty, I mean Tashin because we now have two Ty's on the cast. Tashin peeped Spanky's vibe once Andre pulled up. And I don't know if there was a text message shared between them or it was kind of like, let's go talk to the side real quick. You know what I mean? Like, however it happened, Tashin and Andre, I mean, Tashin and Spanky get up and walk away to go have a private conversation. This causes World War III. Andre doesn't say anything, but Nakai and Joel say something. Joel being Andre's friend, I can somewhat understand why he spoke up, but I don't feel like it was conducive for him to speak up. 
just because it just now becomes a, a, a very heavily hostile situation where you have several different personalities worried about a situation that doesn't necessarily pertain to them. And now Nakai and Joelle are dragging the situation out, like trying to go up on Tashin because they feel like he was the pioneer of, oh, let's get up and walk away type shit while Andre was in the middle of like doing his introduction and telling who he was, what he does, what he's about, you know, that whole thing, right? When Tashim returns back to the group, he's like, well, that wasn't my intentions. Andre, if you felt that way, you know, that wasn't what it was. So be it, I apologize, you know, were you upset or offended? And Andre says, no, he's fine. It should have been dead it right then and there. Joel and Akai should have zipped it up. Cause like, if. Andre, who it's about and dealing with and who y'all feel was being disrespected, if Andre doesn't feel disrespected, if Andre's not in a bind about what just happened, neither should y'all too. That's just my personal opinion. Hey, that's all I'm saying. But we have next week to see how the rest of the situation unfolds, who else comes out of the cut. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll see what next week brings, what personalities, show don't show what drama lingers doesn't linger we'll see yeah this week was a little like it was cute it was it wasn't too crazy it wasn't too drama filled but it was very much um something to keep your eyes out for certain for certain cast members please feel free to comment below your thoughts what you thought of the first episode what you think is going to happen how you think the season's going to play out who your favorite cast member is so far any questions you want to ask me so that's it for this week very short, very sweet, straight to the point, but I had to dive on in and um, analyze the girls and, and the guys. This is the Fitz facts. <laughs> These are the Fitz facts and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>